I'm going to be telling you a little bit about an area of statistical analysis that I do. I'm going to be telling you a little bit about structural equation modelling. I'm going to explain it to you in five minutes using a tea towel. Statistical analysis using a tea towel. If, uh, if this tea towel is my data, then I'm going to tell you about how structural equation modelling can actually uh, help us understand what's going on, on underneath the surface in terms of things that might be causing the data to change, but we can't actually measure them. We can't actually see them. We have to infer what they're doing because of their influence upon the data that we can see. So, if this is the data that I'm going to be interested in to look at, and this is the process I'm trying to work out, then although I can't measure it directly, this is the latent variable that I'm going to actually have to be trying to explain, even though I can't see it at all when I'm actually carrying out the data analysis. Latent variables are just variables that we can't see that we're interested to try and model. If I was a psychologist uh, then, or a psychometrician, then a latent variable I might be interested in might be intelligence. And so I might try and measure how people score on tests. If I was a sociologist, then I might be interested in something like social class. And I might be interested to measure or observe what their uh, occupation was um, or how they voted, for instance. If I was a medic or a clinical psychologist, I might be interested in something like depression and I might look at uh, whether or not someone had low mood or whether their self-esteem uh, was low. So one of the things you can do with structural equation modelling is find out about the construct that you're interested in. The latent variable is indicated by these uh, observable features, such as what occupation you have and, and what type of mood you report. And you can have a look at how well these things seem to be related together to the construct that you're interested in. So for instance, a political scientist might be interested about how constructs change over time. So up until about the 1960s, uh, how you voted and wh which political party you felt allegiance to might have been a good indicator of social class. These days, um, less than about 30% of people vote in a, in a way that's consistent with what might be considered their social class. And so it's not such a good indicator of the latent variable we like to call uh, social class. As well as looking at the way that uh, the construct might change over time, like the example for social class, uh, it's also the case that although a construct might stay consistent over time, we might be interested in looking at how it changes even though you might not carry out every individual behaviour or every indicator of that uh, construct uh, every day over time. So I was involved in a piece of research where we are looking at people with severe psychotic illness and we were looking at the types of symptoms that they were showing uh, on how those things changed month to month over time and whether or not any uh, experimentally uh, allocated interventions of uh, cognitive behavioural therapy treatment actually affected their development of symptoms and their uh, eventual uh, subsidence of those symptoms over time. A big feature in science in general is trying to work out why things happen. So if I can measure these latent constructs uh, and decide that I'm happy that I've measured them correctly, the next natural question is going to be what causes them or what do they cause? So with the tea towel example, you might be fairly sure that you're, it's clear that it's me that it's doing it, but how was I actually uh, uh, making the tea towel move? And that's the sort of question that you can also address in structural equation modelling, questions of causality. With certain types of question, it's fairly easy to establish causality based upon what we know about the world. Eating turkeys doesn't cause Christmas. But with other types of question, especially when the, uh, the theory hasn't been worked out well or whether we've been blinded by the context of the question, we can actually get a bit confused. So, for instance, uh, I could quite easily demonstrate that going to sleep fully clothed on the sofa with your shoes on was greatly related to whether or not you had a blinding headache in the morning afterwards. That might be ignoring the fact that there's something causing both of those things, like getting a bit drunk the night before. So, we've looked at the idea of measuring things that you can't observe directly. We've looked at the idea of establishing whether those things can actually tell you about the construct that you're interested in that you can't see. We've looked at whether or not you might want to look at how that process changes over time. And we've also had a look at whether or not you could establish causality, whether one thing leads to another leads to another. Structural equation modelling is a technique that you can use to tie all these questions together and enable you to answer a research question uh, using a coherent, uh, simple family of models that you can fit to your data and answer your research question. Manchester is an excellent place to come and study these things. Um, there's a research methods network here that's probably unparalleled uh, in its breadth uh, of interest and the way in which people span disciplinary areas, sharing their knowledge and using uh, methods that usually might have been associated with only one topic area to look at uh, problems from their topic area.